tonight I'm going to be showing you several different projects. I have four different treat favors. Um, and I started with um, Easter in mind. Um, and certainly these are things that you can change up and um, do different things with. And uh, well, again, welcome to everybody. I'm glad you're here. If you are new to my business page, I'm Mary Nabe of stampinpeace.com. And I'm happy you're here to um, get some creative inspiration. So the first thing I have for you is this, um, these cute little treat favors. And um, I started with an Easter theme for these and switched out to just spring or something bright and cheerful. Um, and I think it's something that maybe we could even use right now, um, just making some little favors and dropping them off on neighbor's porches or um, taking a basket of them over to the fire department or dropping them off um, uh, perhaps at a volunteer station at the hospital, whatever you can think of, just to um, add a little sunshine and cheer to people's day. So let me show you how I made this and what products I've used, and um, then we'll move on to the other three projects. Welcome Sharon and Rosie and Cecilia, nice to have you here. And thanks to all who are sharing. I sure appreciate that. Oh, Mary Lou, <laughs> I, I know how exciting that is to place an order and know it's shipping and it's on its way. It's sort of like Christmas. Oops, I don't need this just yet. So the, the first thing whoops, that you'll need is the mini Kirby keepsake box dies. Okay. And um, this is smaller than the one we used to have, and I actually like it much better um, because it's easier just to put a few little candies or something in there. Um, the other reason I like it is you only have to cut one. Our other one was larger. You had to cut two pieces and put them together. I like this one that is just one piece. So I cut this previously to getting on. And there are some score lines marking the bottom square, okay? And before I put mine together, I just like to gently curl each of the four flaps. Just curl it around your finger gently. Don't hold or pull too tight because you don't want to tear it. Who else is jumping on? Hi, Marty and Deb. Thanks for joining in. I think I've said hello to everybody. And then there are these two, I call them the purse handles, and they have little score lines, so you just wanna fold those back. And then when you put these together, pull the two purse handles together and slide that notch over, that one slit. And then I like to leave it open at this point and obviously put some treats in. And I'm going to tell you, this is really bad that I'm home alone and um, opened up the candy. I feel like stress is just making me, um, oops, stress is just making me eat. So I keep, as I've been making the little treat favors, I've been rubber banding the chocolates so I don't get into them. Lord knows I ate enough of those cookies I made this weekend. And then you just close it up like that. Now to make the little spring tag on here, I'm using the, I'm gonna show you. I'm using the tiny little flower from the Under My Umbrella stamp set. And this has that fun umbrella builder punch that coordinates with it. Love, love, love that. Perfect for, um, this time of year, springtime. Um, also love it for just, you know, bridal showers, baby showers, things like that. So I'm going to stamp with my Memento ink. And I'm gonna set this aside. And I've got Granny Apple Green and Mango Melody 
dark shades for both of them that I'm going to use to color the flowers and leaves. And then I'll cut this out using one of the little tag dies also from that um, mini curvy keepsake box set of dies. That's a mouthful to say. And this is when I need my big shot. I'm going to cut two little dies at the same time. Oh, Marty, you're right. That stamp set under my umbrella coordinates nicely with um, with the uh, March paper pumpkin kit. And hasn't that March kit been fabulous? Oh my gosh, I loved it. Loved it. I made some of the cards and then a, one set, one of each of the cards I set aside and I wanna make a scrapbook page with it. I started, but I didn't finish to show you. I'll have to post that. So I'm um, using the round circle tag to punch out the flower, and then I'm cutting out a square of Pacific Point, and that matches my little box. Yes, Marty, I saw you've been busy, busy, busy um, stamping with that extra stamp set they gave us in the March Paper Pumpkin Kit. Isn't that fabulous? I love that when they, when they throw those extra um, gifts in there. And that one celebrates um, Paper Pumpkin's seventh birthday. I don't know if we say birthday or anniversary, but that was the reason for it. Okay, and then I'm going to use my baker's twine and I'm going to cut off about 12 inch strip or 12 inch piece of the baker's twine. And when I use this, I always find it's easier just to make a fold it and make a small loop to stick through the holes for some reason. For me, that always works a little bit better then pushing the end through. I've been working down here in my finished basement pretty much all day. I did go upstairs and have lunch, but just before I got on to the live, I realized my fingers are so cold down here all of a sudden. I'm not cold, just my fingers. I think that's a sign I just need to stop. I've been getting a lot of tendonitis in my hand again. Just trying to work hard and find new ways of doing business while I'm not able to do in-person classes. So um, I'm having fun, but I need to give my hand a break here. And I'm trying to get in a few um, just a little, few little home projects for myself. Nothing big, I mean like home decor, Stampin' Up style kind of thing. Um, and I'm enjoying that too. I haven't had time to do that kind of thing in a, a very long time. So that is the nice thing about doing Stampin' Up full time again. And that's it. So how easy would it be to make several of these? My designer series paper is from the Brights six by six designer series paper collection okay brights so and and these four colors happen to be melon mambo um mango melody gorgeous grape and pacific point okay so now i have four little fun favors to give out or drop on somebody's porch just to bring some extra fun and extra cheer and happiness to their days. 
So here is the next set of favors I made. These would be cute sitting in an Easter basket or um, sitting at a place setting for your Easter dinner. Um, how far away is Easter? What, about two and a half weeks? Um, so we'll see. Ho hopefully we can uh, enjoy some Easter dinner with our families and such. But um, I think little children would enjoy these in their baskets as well and um, just fun little things to um, say Happy Easter and welcome people to our homes or for us to take um, as little hostess gifts um, or favors to wherever we might go and celebrate Easter. So these are super quick and easy to make also. Um, if you've been stamping and crafting with me for a while, you know I like to do um, things that are, you know, look pretty or look cute and festive, but don't have a thousand pieces and parts. Um, things that, you know, because typically when you're making favors, you are making a lot. I'm seeing on here, I know Joyce Wilhelm, she made 65 at Christmas time um, for two different groups. And, and I remember seeing pictures of those. Those were awesome. Thought I saw somebody else here. Joyce Letterby cutting out 120 of those for a friend's daughter's wedding. Yes, but you know what? They're gonna be a hit. It might be time consuming, but um, you know, they come together pretty easily and um, they're gonna be the hit. They really are, Joyce. Okay, so for these, I am using our two by two clear tiny treat boxes. That's how they're, what they're called. And I have a tendency to share things and never know the price. So today I opened up uh, the catalog and pulled some prices. So the clear tiny treat boxes are actually two by two finished. Okay, two inches by two inches cubed. And um, you get 16 in a package for $7.50. So uh, pretty reasonably priced, less than 50 cents a piece. So that's awesome. Now, all of the Stampin' Up! boxes are generally um, designed in the same way. So what I like to tell myself, well, hi, Shannon. <laughs> hi, Cindy. Nice to have you. Um, so what I keep in mind every time I'm putting together a Stampin' Up! box is I start on the bottom, and it's got the one flap that is the U shaped. So I do U and then the sides and then what I call the cereal box top and push that all in there. Okay, and it goes together really easily. You'll also want to fold out the flaps on the score lines. And I have previously cut two two by two inch squares. Now I will tell you, when I cut these, I cut them a smidgen, and I'm talking a smidgen, not even a sixteenth of an inch, a smidgen smaller than two by two. The reason for that is this one, I want to drop right inside and adhere it to the bottom just to make it look a little neater. And then the other one, I'm going, oops. Is this the one I tried to fix last time I was out live? It might be. Um, and the other one I'm using as for the top to make a nice finished look on that top. Okay, whoops, is that very straight? Okay, and might as well add some chocolates in right now, right? Have you ever had these Dove chocolates? Okay, they are just so addicting. That's why I have to keep rubber banding them so I don't get into them, but they are awesome. Melt in your mouth. Okay, so you have that so far. 
Then you're going to need a strip of cardstock, or it could be coordinating um, designer series paper as well, but you need a strip that measures one inch by eight and a half. Okay, one inch by eight and a half. And I'm just going to put some adhesive on each end. And if you've been stamping with me for a while, you know um, my trick that I like to put the seams near the corner so that you don't see those seams like right in the middle of the back or something or in the front. I like to st strategically place them. Um, and chances are people aren't even gonna notice that seam. It just gives it a little bit nicer, um, more professional looking finish to it. So I have that. Okay, I did cut and stamp the Happy Easter sign. And where is my punch? Here it is. This one measures three inches by, let me double check. Yes, three inches by three and a quarter inch. And I'm using my Taylor Tag Punch, and I'm just going to cut out a tiny little banner punch on each end. Again, giving it just a nice, a nice finish with that punch down. Okay. And I'm going to adhere this to the front. Another thing you could put here instead of the Happy Easter sign is um, names. So if you wanted to do the names of the people um, coming to your Easter dinner, you can do that and use them as um, um, little place signs. Okay. Then I previously cut, or uh, stamped, I should say, a bunny from... I'm gonna switch things out here. From our Welcome Easter stamp set. You've seen me use this a whole lot this season. It's darling, I love it. And they are really cute. Um, I know Easter isn't just about the bunnies and all that, um, but making little things like this for the kids is always lots of fun. Um, the next favor I'm going to show you um, does have more of a religious theme for it. So, um, and I really like the way that one turned out. So definitely stick around so you can see that. Be sure and comment while you're watching. If you have questions, feel free to ask questions, comments, suggestions, whatever. I'm using um, my Crumb Cake Stampin' Blends in both the light and the dark shades. And the pink I used is um, Flirty Flamingo Light. Now I'm gonna go back and blend with Crumb Cake Light. And I just like to keep blending, going along that outer edge where I put the darker shade. And I just keep going around like that until that line of the dark shade has blended in and now you no longer see the line. Can you tell? See how I've blended it in and you can no longer see the um, line that I started with around the face or the head. I'm gonna fill in these ears a little bit. Hi Vicki, thanks for joining us. I was watching the Today Show this morning in um, Al Roker and, oh, I can't think of the other guy's name. 
Oh, I can't think. But they're both staying home. They're working from home and broadcasting from their homes. But um, they were talking about how their families attended church on um, the weekend on Sunday and the children attended Sunday school, that kind of thing. And all of a sudden, Al Roker said something about um, Palm Sunday being this Sunday and then Easter the following week. And I had a panic, like, what? Easter already? How did I, you know, how did it creep up on me so fast? Only to realize that Al Roker was off by a whole week. So now I have more time to make my fun things that I want to get out to some little people and such make some things for my family and I'm using garden green here and I'm going to fill in the grass with not garden green I'm sorry granny apple green and I'm just going to fill in by sponging some more ink using my sponge dauber okay Nice and bright. And then I'm going to sponge some pool party ink on there. Craig Melvin, yep, Craig, yes. Thank you, Joyce. Savannah's been working from home. So even, even those people we're used to seeing in their work environment every single day on, on TV are also staying at home. And hopefully things in Ohio won't get nearly as bad as they are in um, New York. All right, let me get this out of the way. And I'm going to punch this with a two and a quarter inch circle punch. And now that is ready to go on top of our box. I like to use dimensionals when I'm putting these on. Yes, April 12th, thank goodness. Thanks to all of you who have shared either before the live started, after the live started, or um, you'll share once it's ended. All of those times are great. Okay, so quick and easy, right? A great thing for you to um, make and set out at your Easter table. Mary Lou has a birthday coming up. Well, happy birthday. My mom's was the 12th, and we have several, My both my nieces, we have several on um, both my family and Peter's family um, in April. So lots of celebrating, Mary Lou. We'll celebrate with you. Okay, all finished with that. Now here is my next one. Okay, God is love. And let me show you the products I've used. The nice thing about these is um, you can make them up ahead of time and just keep them folded flat for storage. And then when you're ready, I don't know what I'm going to put in these, um, you can fill them then. But these are the pillow boxes from Stampin' Up. I also checked the price on these. Uh, they are $5 for a set of 10 craft pillow boxes. Okay, $5 for 10, so 50 cents a piece, reasonable. And to make this favor, I've used the Hold On To Hope stamp set, and it has the coordinating um, die set to go with it, which I really, really love. You can, um, of course, stamp the cross, and cut it out, or you can cut out these fancier ones. There's a little one. Um, there's a die to cut out this floral bit and the flower, the banner. Um, I also love Hold On To Hope. And a lot of times I've used that for people going through cancer treatments or something difficult in their life. 
But I think, gosh, you know, that is very fitting for the time we are living in right now. So this is what I chose to make. I've got my pillow box. By the way, this is six inches. And my next favor, we're actually gonna cut this in half. So you can think of it as 10 favors for $5, or you can think of it as five, or uh, 20 favors for $5, okay? Yes, Lisa, I like to um, add the, um, the grass and the sky around the animals. Just that little bit of extra um, sponging of ink really, really makes them, um, just makes them stand out and makes them look more finished too. Um, they're not just floating, the animals are not just floating in air. So that's why I like to do that. So, oh, and I just noticed this one is kind of cut off on the edge, but I'm gonna go ahead and use it and I can switch it out later. So I started by cutting out a large oval from our Stitch Shapes dies, okay? The largest oval, you know, in that collection of dies, there's square circles and ovals. I use the largest oval and I'm just going to adhere that. Do you see that where I, my die must have slipped or I was doing it on a piece of scrap paper and the edge got cut off a little bit, but I can switch it out later. Okay, then I simply cut the cross from a sheet of the pressed petals designer series paper. It's floral on one side and then has this wood grain on the back of the designer series paper. So that's what I cut the wood, um, the cross from, is that wood looking designer series paper from Press Petals, or is that what it's called? I think so, um, designer series paper. And then I used Gorgeous Grape ink to stamp the banner on Highland Heather cardstock. And now I'll just cut that out with my Big Shot. Now this is one of those occasions you might want to use a piece of washi tape. And you'll notice you have to make sure you're, you've got the it looks like there is, um, the die would fit either way, but that's not the case. You wanna match up the ends correctly. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of washi tape. The washi tape is to make sure that the die stays in place where I want it. And doesn't move around on me once I start cranking it through the big shot. Okay. This is a great set, Vicki. I totally agree. I, and honestly, I don't use it enough. And it's probably one, I don't know if it'll retire or stay around. I'm hoping it stays around, but I see myself keeping that, you know, as a, a demonstrator, I can't keep everything. Um, so a lot of times when things retire, I will sell them or use them as incentives or something. Um, just can't keep everything. But this might be one I just keep. Sometimes, um, and I like, to have something religious always. You know, it could work for baptisms, first communions, confirmations, um, could be weddings, somebody um, in need of encouragement, Easter, all kinds of things. And that's it. Quick and easy, right? Um, Fran, you just can't make yourself sell it. I totally get it. And I will say, when you put these um, pillow boxes together, you can fit a, um, you're probably not gonna give a gift card for Easter, I know that, but if you're using the pillow box for other occasions, 
it is um, a great size for putting a um, gift card in. So consider that when you're giving gift cards, you can decorate it all different ways. Alrighty, let's see here. I'm trying to keep track of... Yes, you love all the different crosses in there. Me too. I do as well. Okay, and we have one more project to do together. And this is a pillow box cut in half. Okay, I used one pillow box and I cut it in half. So we can make this, um, one thing I want to mention to you, we can make this flat. When you are working with these, there's each end has just a regular curved end and the other end, side of that end has a little notch. That's for opening. So you want to do the flap without a notch first and then the notched end. And I like to have the notch facing the back. Okay, again, just one of those little details that um, makes it a little bit more finished. So, so when you're starting, that notch is going to be on the front, but when you finish and put this together, fold those flaps in, that notch will be facing the back. Okay, so think about that when you're putting it together, especially if you're working flat. Um, now, I have to give some credit to my demonstrator friend Rachel Tessman, she um, was the one who I got this um, heart bunny face idea from. So thank you Rachel Tessman for the inspiration on that. I want to show you where I cut these from. So I'm going back to the Stitch Shapes dies with the oval squares and circles and I've used the smallest oval for the ears. You'll need two of those, smallest oval in that collection. And then for the inside of the ear, does anybody recognize this piece, what it would be from? It's actually from the lily pad die set. It's the small lily pad die. Okay, you see that? Okay, so um, no, we don't have a bunny die or bunny builder punch or anything like that right now, but we can get creative and um, find ways of using other things to get the shapes and the sizes that we need. And basically, we call that punch art. And some of you have probably done punch art many times and are very good at it. Um, I don't do it quite as much, but when I do, I always really enjoy it. And by the way, if you love punch art, there's a demonstrator named um, Michelle Sweet, I believe, S-U-I-T, who is phenomenal, phenomenal with punch art. I mean, she's done Disney characters, all kinds of great things. She really um, does an awesome, awesome job. Oops, I already put glue dots on those, so I don't need that. I've got lots of these glue dots from my paper pumpkin kits. As Deb Henning said to me, we'll, we'll never run out of glue dots as long as we subscribe to paper pumpkin because they give us more, more than enough. Way more than enough. So I just pick them up from the sheet and put them on. And then I lift off the backing with that piercing end of my take your pick tool. I'm going all the way to the bottom of the ear with the little notched end of the pink. And the pink that I'm using today is Blushing Bride for this project. Okay, next you're going to use a white heart that you've punched from the um, heart punch pack. 
you're going to turn it upside down and I prefer to put the ears on first, okay? I think if you put the ears on first and put the ears on at the same time so you know they're kind of even, then it's a little bit easier to um, get the whole face and everything to fit. So just about like that. Okay. Now I'm going to put the bow on next because I have found that if I don't, I don't necessarily leave enough room for the eyes and the, the nose for the bunny. So this is gorgeous grape striped ribbon that can be found in our annual cat catalog. Perfect for spring, perfect for Easter, and perfect for people who are purple lovers like my friend Joyce Lutterby who's watching. But it's a nice weight of ribbon and it's really um, easy to work with too. I'm gonna trim those ends. Just making a little bow. And putting a bow here um, means that this gets covered up. So it doesn't, you know, not that it looks ugly, but just kind of looks unfinished to me. So I'm going to finish it off with the nice bow. Okay. The next thing I want to do is put on some eyes. And I have to give Rachel Tessman credit for this as well. Um, just use a Sharpie or something like that if you want the black um, eyes on there. However, what I will tell you is I think because I colored that little black part on the eyes first, well then I wanted them each a certain direction so I had a little trouble um, placing them exactly the way I wanted, you know, one turned a little bit more than the other. So my suggestion to you is put the eyes on first and then use your permanent black marker to um, you know, make the black eyes or, you know, have them looking a certain direction, something like that. And I have lost my, I shouldn't say lost, it's here somewhere. I've misplaced my black um, Stampin' Blend marker. And I, of course, I want to use the Stampin' Blend because that is, um, will be permanent. So. I'll have to look for that more, but in the meantime, I'm just using a black Sharpie. I think the black Stampin' Blend does a little bit better job, but if you don't have that, the black Sharpie will do, as you can see here. And these are, I didn't say that, these are the glitter enamel dots. Oh, so fun. Gorgeous grape, lovely lipstick, um, granny apple green, and pool party. Super fun, super sparkly. If you love bling, you need these. Next, I'm going to put a nose on. And now I'm going to use the clear flat faceted gems. And these are great for coloring. You can see that I've already colored one with the Stampin' Blend markers. Here I colored some um, with daffodil for a different project I had been working on. But they come in three different sizes. I'm using the medium size. And that's gonna be the bunny's nose. So putting that there. You know what I didn't do on the other one that maybe I should have? Do you think it needs whiskers or do you think you sh I should just let it go? Purpleologist store in North Myrtle Beach. Oh, I've heard of that place, Marty. <laughs> Joyce Lutterby, have you been there? OK, 
okay. So just some light whiskers. It's not so good because I was all, already had it glued down, but we can do the same thing here. I would just use the finest um, permanent marker that you have. Yes, Amy, I did get your um, email, and I'll have to give you a call. Kathleen says whiskers. Good. <laughs> okay, Joyce, you're going to need to take a road trip there, Joyce Letter B, to see that um, everything purple store. Okay, and now we're ready to adhere this. Now, when you adhere this, you may want to... Oh, pink blush would be cute. Oh, you are so right, Mary Lou. See, this is why I love Facebook Lives, because I get some interaction from all of you, and it's just much more fun, and you are sometimes thinking of things I have not thought of. Very, very slight. What do you think of that? How's that, Mary Lou DeStefano? Okay. Amy, could be a problem with your internet if you're lo losing the live. Um, I'm okay on my end. I did have a problem yesterday when I was doing it for a private group. Oh, that just makes it. The whiskers and that little bit of pink blush. Oh, thank you, ladies. That made a world of difference. I liked it before. I love it now. Marty, yes, I agree. So much better. Cute, cute, cute. Oh, this is awesome. Really, if I have a question like that, and I kept staring at that all day, that sample, thinking... What what is missing? Why is it not? Why am I not loving it? Um, Kiki, you can look for the Dauber case on Amazon. Um, Debbie Price had found them. I don't remember where exactly, but we purchased them on Amazon, very reasonably pr priced, and came with the set of Daubers. So I really really like it. And then the chart I just found online somewhere okay I'm sure if you google it you'll be able to find it they're pretty popular all right what I was going to say is when you are ready to put the bunny on be sure that you are aware of where um, the flap will fold so that you know where you're putting your bunny on and I did not adhere mine so it's flat around like that. You can if you want, but I kind of like that it's popping off of the, um, the box. And I'm going to put mine on with some multi-purpose glue. So I'm just putting that glue down the center of the heart, down the center of the bunny's face. Okay. And while it's drying, I'm just going to open this up and let it sit flat. We do have, whoops, we do have one more part to put on this little bunny. Make sure it's straight there. Okay. On the back, the bunny has a cute little tail. Okay. So I punched a half inch circle from Blushing Bride cardstock and then I put where's my take your pick I put one of these clear fa faceted gems on it in fact you know I think I'm gonna color this one too I did the nose and not the tail on that one but I'm kind of thinking it would be cuter with that bit of color. Oops, got it on the cardstock, so I might as well go around it and color the cardstock too. Okay, 
So if you want to color that, I suggest coloring it before you put it on cardstock. Oh, I like that better. Okay. And then when I'm ready to adhere it to the back, I'm just simply going to use a glue dot to do that. Oh, Mary Lou, are you fast? Scrapbook.com. Chrissy, have you and Violet been uh, crafting a lot at home? I hope your kids are doing well and keeping busy. I know it's hard for children not just to be home, but to be without their friends and their teachers and such. Um, so it's just kind of hard on everybody. Pom-pom would be very cute too. Yep, pom-pom would be cute too. Okay, so that's that. And you just put a little treat in there, bag up some candy or stick like a mini candy bar or two in there um, and it would be awesome. Yep, I think the I think the pom-pom would be darling. The the only pom-poms that we sell right now, Stampin' Up sells right now are the uh, ones that go with the birthday bonanza and they're they're even smaller than that, like half that size. So that's why I opted to go with um, the faceted gem and stuff instead. But um, very cute very simple what do you think would you give this a try um i hope that you have enjoyed all the projects